Where we left off was we've just made the guide track, we've sent it out to everyone and hopefully by now everyone has sent back the recordings to you and you've got all the files organised. So I normally start working in the same project that the guide track was in because we've already set up the tempo and we've got the guide track at the top to follow along. This is the folder that I've got all my videos in and all the videos are nicely named which is going to really come in handy later on. So all we need to do is drag them into logic like so and this little dialog box is going to come up. We need to make sure we're not opening the movie. We just want to extract the audio file because remember we're doing the audio and video completely separately. So just press OK and you're going to have to hold in the enter key because you have to do OK for every single one. And it will only take a few seconds hopefully. So that's all my files imported now. First thing we need to do is make sure we can move them because right now they've all got a little lock on them which means if we try and drag it, it's going to snap right back. So just click and drag to highlight every track and right click. Now go down to SMPTE lock and just press unlock SMPTE position. That's got rid of our lock which is nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down everything just ever so slightly because when you film on a phone, it tries to make it as loud as possible. But what that is doing is creating a problem because everything is super loud and it's just going to be all distorted. So I'm going to go to this inspector window here in the gain box and type minus five. That's brought everything down by five decibels. Now what we need to do is organize it. Um, what I'm going to do is just by pulling these tracks around like so, I'm going to put them in the order of the band and that just makes everything so much easier. So I'm going to do that and we'll be back in a second. So now I've got all my files in order, starting at soprano cornet, onto the solo cornets, then the back row cornets, um, horns, euphoniums, baritones, trombones and basses. This piece doesn't have any percussion. So, now that I've done that, I'm just going to do a bit more organisation before we get into lining everything up. What I'm going to do is put everything into folders. So I'm just going to click on the soprano, and I'm going to go down to the last cornet, which is the third cornet. I'm going to highlight them all by pressing shift and click. Then I'm going to press command, shift, G. That's going to create a folder for me, and I'm going to name it cornets. And I'm going to do the same for the rest of the set. Great, so now I've got all my folders which I can close away and open when I need them. I'm just going to move the guide track up to the top again for ease of movement. Now the fun part is lining everything up. What we're going to do is we're going to zoom in really close to the first note, which is again bar 2, beat 3. And we're going to drag every other thing, every other performance, back. Now, if you can't push it back enough, it's because the audio file bottoms out at the start of the project. All you have to do is press Command T to trim, then delete what's in front, and you can pull it back to wherever you need to be. So, I'm going to do the same for every track, and I'll be back when everything is lined up. So, I've spent some time now getting everything lined up and everything starts at the same place which is bar 2, beat 3, right there. I've also deleted the guide track at the top because we don't need that anymore. So, the next thing is panning. So, what panning is, is putting things to the left speaker or the right speaker, depending on where you want them in the mix. Now, for this is a brass band, so I'm just going to do it as if you're in the audience. So the pan wheel here lets you go all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Now I would never go all the way, but what I'm going to do is for the soprano, because it's the furthest to the left if you're in the audience, is go about 40-ish, right about there. So pretty far to the left. Now I'm just going to do that for every instrument to where they would be if I was the audience or the conductor. So the way I do it with the cornet says you start with the soprano, all the way to the left and everything gradually gets closer to the centre till the last third cornet. 
Now, in the horns, similar idea, just do it to where they actually are on stage, which is pretty centre for them. Now, the baritones are going to be quite far to the right, and the youths are going to be even further to the right. The first trombone is going to be the furthest to the right, similar to the soprano, so about 40. And second trombone a bit less, bass trombone almost in the middle there. And I just leave the basses right in the centre because that's where you want the foundation of the sound to come from. So now it's time to listen to it the first time and hope that it all lines up and sounds good. So that actually sounds great. We've got a few things to do though. We need to get the balance a bit better. Um, so what I'm going to do is press X on my keyboard, which is going to bring up my mixer. Or you could press this button up in the left hand side here. Now this brings up my mixer and lets me adjust the volumes. So I'm going to go through it, listen to it, see what needs to go up, see what needs to go down and you'll hear it in a minute. <laughs> doing this I can solo things so if I want to solo a B flat bass and I can play about with his volume and the same way if you wanted to mute someone to see what it's like without them you just press the M next to the S which is mute So I think that sounds much better balanced now, it's only a few tweaks I've done. Now what we need to do is try and make the phone recordings sound slightly better. So typically with phone recordings you're not going to get a whole lot of high end, it's going to be quite mid-range focused, so what we can do is do some equalisation to the frequencies um, or EQ. Now the way to do that in Logic is let's choose our solo euphonium for example, so you go to audio effects and let's go to EQ and channel EQ and a shortcut for that is just to press this little box here and that automatically creates a new channel EQ so let's so solo our euphonium and see what needs done so very mid-range focused we're going to bring out the highs I'm doing is I'm sweeping till I find the frequency that I like and then I'm going to bring it down because that's far too much that'll sound good now what else you can do is you can cut frequencies that you don't like so Again, on phone recordings you can sometimes get a really boxy, roomy sound in the mid-range. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boost those frequencies until I don't like it, then I'm going to bring them down. There it is, right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this number at the bottom here, 0 0.3, and I'm going to put that up, and that is the Q value, and that is just how thin or thick your bandwidth is in the equalization so it's how much the frequencies around the middle frequency are getting changed and I'm going to bring the gain down to probably around minus five now do you see how that cleans it up in the mid range so what I would do now is go around all the instruments, find any frequencies that you don't like, get rid of them, and we'll see how it sounds. Now, 
also in this process what we can do is solo individual sections so if you want to solo the trombones press that and we'll play it so you might think overall maybe the whole section needs a bit of high end boost just press the EQ square up here on the whole of the trombones section Sounds good. So another nice trick is to go onto the bass section, just the whole bass section, solo them, grab an EQ and play around with the lower frequencies and try and get some real beef. Beef's a nice word for it, just get some nice thickness around the sound. Usually around 80 to 100 hertz I go for. Which you can, which is the numbers here, by the way. And there's another, again, there's quite a boxy sound around the mid range, so I'm just going to find that and get rid of it. some sparkle at the top. Don't know if anyone's ever used the word sparkle with basses. That sounds great. So I think we're at a decent stage now, not everything needs EQ, um, I would probably go do some more but for the purposes of this video that's going to do for now. So now what we want to do, we've got everything panned, we've got everything balanced, we're going to now go to the master output and we're going to master it. And what we need to do is get some reverb, make it sound like it's all in the same room because right now everyone's in a different room and the whole purpose of this is to try and bring everyone into the same room. So. The stereo output fader here is your very, very last thing in the whole process and that's where you're going to put all your final effects. So what I like to do is grab Chromaverb, which is a nice plugin that comes with Logic. So if you go to Reverb and Chromaverb and press Stereo. My favourite one to use is the Concert Hall, funnily enough. And I usually turn the decay down to about 1516-ish. I turn the dry up to about 80 and then you play around with the wet. So self-explanatory, the dry is just a signal without any reverb and the wet is just reverb. So you're going to blend in the reverb with the dry signal. So that's dry, this is wet. And that's just ridiculous. So. Go to 80 and we'll blend in the wet. I'd say for this style of music that reverb's too long, so I'm going to go down to 1.4. And I also like to put up the stereo width to 150 because it sounds amazing. Now on this other page you've got details, you can play around with the output EQ. I generally turn down the high end because it can get a bit harsh at times and another good thing to do is cut out some low rumble in the reverb to make it sound a lot more natural. Now what we're going to do is master the audio. Now what that means is to bring up the overall volume of the whole audio file to as loud as we can get it without distorting, just like we did with the guide track. 
So we're going to grab a limiter again and we're going to play around with it until we're getting a little bit of gain reduction here um, but not too much and we'll set our output level at zero. Okay, so that sounds good volume wise. I just want to add a bit more high end just because that same thing. I always want more high end with this sort of stuff because you want to make it sound live and energetic, but the phone recordings don't really do that justice. So I'm going to put a channel EQ before the limiter. That's really important that you put it before the limiter. The last thing you want on the effects is the limiter. And I'm just going to add some high end, maybe a bit of low end just to finish it off. So you can see there's quite a lot of rumble here below 40 hertz. You don't need that. Um, so I'm just going to put what they call a high pass filter, um, which is just going to cut off below 40 hertz and just clean it up in the low end and make it a bit tighter. Great, now there's other things you could put on the master fader. Instead of that EQ, you could find another EQ, like you can go to the vintage EQs, and if you go to a uh, vintage tube EQ, there's a really nice trick with the low end. Um, if you go on low boost, stick about three or four, and then low attenuation, um, what it's actually doing is it's boosting and cutting the frequency at the same time and it actually ends up compressing it in a really nice way and it just makes it sound really nice for the low end. And again, if you want more high end, that's your high boost. So, there you go, like that, you've got your piece mixed. If you've got a longer piece, it's obviously going to take a lot more time. Um, you'll want to start going into things like automation. Um, if you go up here, this little icon, or press A, it takes you to your automation window. All this lets you do is turn up things at certain points in time. So let's say you want the soprano to be stupidly loud during these few bars. You can do so like this. Obviously that's over the top, but say someone's got a solo coming up, you want to boost them a bit just for those few bars. All you have to do is click around where you want it and you can change the levels. You can do fades. It's literally like drawing, you're drawing in the volume. So we've got our nice audio file ready to go. I'm going to do the same as we did for the guide track. I'm going to select our whole piece. I'm going to add a little bit to the end just to just to compensate for that reverb tail. And what I'm going to do is do our final bounce. So if you go to BNCE, same as we did in the guide track, now we're going to choose a wave file, not an MP3. Um, just leave everything as it is, you won't have to touch anything. Yours will probably be 44, 100, but I've got mine set to 48 at the moment. Um, I'm usually on that one, but it doesn't matter. Press OK. Let's save that as Black Dyke. Happy birthday. Version 1. I always like to put a nice version 1 because it's more than likely that you're going to come back and change it later and bounce. So there you go, you've exported your track, it will be in the folder and we're going to move on to the video next, so see you then.